Hi friend, welcome. I am so thankful that you're here. This is a good day. Uh, it's been a convicting day for me. We are on day three of Mark chapter 16. We are about to wrap up our study of Mark. Oh, let's let him do his good work in our hearts. Lord, we surrender. We surrender our hearts to you. We surrender our minds to you. Lord, help us to pray. Help us to believe. Help us to trust. Help us to go and proclaim uh, what you have poured into our hearts. Do your transforming work in our lives. We pray, Lord. Uh, that we might proclaim loudly this good news to all the world. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go ahead and read verse 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Okay, friends. This is good. <laughs> Jesus appears, right? The who is Jesus himself. And it is the 11 disciples. 11, why? Because Judas is gone. Judas betrayed Jesus. So 11 are left. And where are they? They are reclining at the table. They are uh, eating together, fellowshipping together, probably mourning and grieving together. And what happens? Jesus appears. He appears, uh, meaning to, you know, I feel like I should have defined this yesterday, to come into sight or view, to be able to see with your eyes. Uh, Luke 24, 36 is the cross reference. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace to you, peace to you. <laughs> oh, how that must have felt. All right. So Jesus, number one, he appears. Jesus, number two, the next verb is he rebukes. He rebukes, he reproaches, he expresses criticism towards the disciples. And we have to ask why, why? Well, he makes it very clear. Number one, their unbelief. Number two, their hard heartedness. All right, their unbelief. They're not trusting, especially this, this not trusting, this unbelief is especially used of not trusting or relying on God or his son, Jesus Christ, all right? And he also calls them out on their hardness of heart. And the cross-reference for the hardness of heart is a cross-reference for the Pharisees and scribes, the Jewish leaders, when Jesus called them out on their hardness of heart. So the disciples here are no different from the the Pharisees hardness of heart this uh, a resolute unfeeling adherence to one's own ideas or desires did you catch that I thought that was pretty interesting a resolute unfeeling adherence to one's own ideas or desires and I just thought um that's stubbornness right there anybody else have a stubborn streak Ouch, ouch, all right? So Jesus, he appears to them, he rebukes them for number one, their unbelief, their 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 lack of trusting in him, and number two, their hard-heartedness. So how did I put all that together? How do we understand it, friends? How do we interpret? And here's what I came up with. I said, oh, wow, the master shows up 
and they are sleeping. They are not watching. They are not praying. And, uh, you know, I put a true disciple believes, a true disciple stands firm and then goes and proclaims, which we'll get that into that in a minute. But I just wondered, I asked this question, how would this scenario read differently had the disciples been standing firm? Had they been praying to God? Uh, we know back in, you know, earlier in Mark, Jesus told the disciples several times what was going to take place. We're going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be delivered over. He will be handed over. He will be, uh, he, he will be, persecuted. I don't think Jesus used that word, but you know what I mean. He will be put to death, but in three days he will rise. He will rise. So Jesus had told them this. So how would this scenario look different? Instead of being in their home, reclining at the table, and I'm going to say fretting, grieving, bemoaning the fact of all that's taken place, uh, what if they had been standing firm? What if they had been watching for Jesus? What if they had been praying to God? What if they had been expecting Jesus to rise, expecting him to come? How might this scenario play out and read differently? And friends, I think this is what we're called to do, right? This is how we're called to live. This is how true disciples, true worshipers of God are called to live. Jesus has taught his disciples to watch, to pray, to stand firm, to believe. Uh, Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. And uh, they, they fall, right? They fall. And I just... I don't know. I found this particularly convicting today. And, you know, in my prayers, I was like, okay, Lord, how often you might have appeared into my home and found me fretting and worrying and anxious and stewing instead of praying praying, believing as if I have already received something. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Ah, okay, so Carmen had some confessing to do today and asking Jesus to help me in my unbelief. So that's my big takeaway. Beyond this, so we have Jesus appearing, Jesus rebuking, and then Jesus commanding, right? We have these imperative verbs, go, proclaim, and proclaim is the, is the main imperative verb here, which makes it a command. Proclaim, to announce, to make known important news publicly. And I thought this was interesting and loudly. All right. We, here's a message we can proclaim loudly. This isn't you know, I think so much, so many of the messages that are in our face today are about me, me, me. Think about social media. Think about marketing, but particularly social media. People are proclaiming, proclaiming loudly about themselves and about the things that they are doing. Oh, Jesus says, here is something to proclaim loudly, the gospel the gospel and the gospel is the good news. The gospel is this triumphant news of a king. This takes us back to Mark 1, 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. The good news, the triumphant news of Jesus, meaning our savior, Christ, the Messiah, the King, here he is. And as the Son of God, he has ushered in God's new kingdom by his death and by his resurrection. He is our salvation. When we believe, he is our salvation. He is our rest. And friends, the whole world needs this good news. And Jesus says to go and proclaim it to the, to the whole 
creation, to the whole creation. And that just means, you know what, this good news is for all. This good news is for everyone. We are not to hold back. Uh, this good news is even for our enemies, right? All the world. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Jesus couldn't be any clear. And then Jesus makes these promises. He says, look, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. This is for sure. This is a done deal. To be saved, to be delivered, to be rescued from our sins and uh, consequence, consequential judgment that comes from sin. There were a lot of great cross-references to that. And he says, whoever does not believe will be condemned, all right? Will be condemned. Again, cross-references, John 3, 18, John 3, 5. So believing is the key word here. Belief, trust, have faith in God. And he says he also promises signs. He promises these miracles that will accompany those who believe. And this takes us back to Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Um, can I get there quickly? I'm going to try because this was one of my favorite verses in all of scripture where Jesus said, let's see. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. So he's speaking to these signs, to these miracles that will happen when we believe, when we believe. And friends, I do think those are all around us. We tend to miss them today, don't we? They look a little bit different in today's world than they did back in the first century. Oh, friends, application, believe, have faith in God as if he was sitting right here. And he is. He's in our hearts. So let us believe. Let us trust. Let us pray believing as if we have already received. He is risen. He is risen indeed.